Hello everybody, Scrabble here, and today I'm coming at you with a review of Yamawari, the Long Night Collection, on Nintendo Switch. Now you probably know this already, but it's October, Halloween season, time to scare and get scared. You might have noticed this trend already. The new Halloween movie just came out, Netflix just released The Haunting of Hill House, YouTubers playing horror games, heck, I just finished playing Outlast Whistleblower for the occasion. So it was with great pleasure that I received a review copy of Yamawari, the Long Night Collection from NIS America. Yamawari falls into the pool of horror games with cutesy graphics and terrifying implications. While I enjoy many different horror styles, this is one that really clicks with me since it reminds me of an odd perversion of the cartoons and simple pleasant stories I enjoyed as a kid. The Yamawari Collection includes two previously released games. Night Alone and Midnight Shadows. These were both released on Steam and PlayStation Vita. Midnight Shadows received a PlayStation 4 release too. Each game in the collection has a slightly different story. In Night Alone, you play as a young girl who has just experienced a tragedy. Afterwards, your sister goes out into the city at night to help you, but doesn't return. You venture into a city that's oddly empty of other human beings in order to find her. In Midnight Shadows, you alternate between two young girls trying to find each other in the night after becoming separated. The game again opens with an unspeakable tragedy happening to one of the girls. Now this, it struck me so much that I really, I just want to tell you about how it opened so badly, but I'm not going to. You can look it up on YouTube, you can play it yourself. I really wouldn't want to spoil anything, but I'd say that both the tragedies that started these games were fantastic and both really set me just slightly off starting the game. The story of Night Alone overall was very simple and while it started with the incredible hook, it quickly slowed down to a pace I didn't find propelled me to continue. The story of Midnight Shadows on the other hand was also simple but thanks to that opening scene in its new depth, I was really pulled into the story of the girls. I really became invested in what was going on. It was a lot harder for me to put down Midnight Shadows. Both games in the collection, Night Alone and Midnight Shadows, take place in small Japanese cities in the middle of the night. The music's incredibly subtle, and instead you're left to focus on all the sounds around you. Your heart beats loudly in your ears as monsters draw near. A low fog is often seen in the level existing in the city before the sun rises to clear it away. Flickering streetlights provide momentary comfort before you move deep into the shadows once more. Your flashlight lights a narrow beam in front of you, occasionally causing you to see the glint of an item or a monster that's only revealed in the light. Unlike when I played Outlast, I most often played this one in the light surrounded by people, and those people were looking my way every time I jumped or gasped from one of the game's many jump scares. Usually I'm not a fan of jump scares, but because of the overwhelming feelings of loneliness and claustrophobia in the game, they almost acted like a moment of rest from the tension which just never let up. Despite both games being very similar in atmosphere, I was drawn in more by Midnight Shadows, which had a higher graphical fidelity and I think that worked to draw me in. As you might expect, both games play out similarly. You wander the dark streets and environments with your trusty flashlight, collecting items that you find and trying to accomplish goals. There are a ton of items to collect while you explore that aren't needed to move the games forward, but offer interesting descriptions in the item screens. While you wander, there are ghosts and monsters in the streets. Some hear you when you run, some like the light from the flashlight or dislike it. The monsters lurk around the corners waiting to run out at you and scare you silly. When an enemy touches you, your screen flashes red as though your blood is now everywhere. Quick save statues are plentiful in the game and allow you to continue from a closer location than where you started the chapter. You can also teleport around the map by jumping from one save statue to any other that you've unlocked before. You pick up items as you go and can throw them around in order to distract enemies. As an example, there are rock enemies who hate the light. If you shine light on them, they'll come and kill you. But if you throw a match, then those rock monsters will cluster to the match instead of killing you. The gameplay was pretty basic overall. Eventually, I started ignoring collectibles, most of which will do nothing for you, and just continuing along the story beats. 
There were times when I'd spend an excessive amount of time wandering since I couldn't find the next location to progress the story. In Midnight Shadows, you continuously switch between two characters trying to find each other in the night. One of the girls is missing her flashlight, and I really enjoyed this twist on the gameplay. My only real complaints with the gameplay are that the levels are often large and too little direction is given in order to find the location needed to move the story forward. Sometimes, you do know where you need to go, but die repeatedly to the same monster jumping out at you. After a while, this causes the scene to lose its effectiveness. The Yamawari Collection was a game I was looking forward to since I love horror games. I started off playing Night Alone, and while it was strong, I found myself not enjoying looking around the city to find the magical location needed to progress. I eventually turned to a walkthrough to help me to complete the game. Midnight Shadows felt like a much stronger game, the story kept moving, and there was less area to get completely lost in. I haven't finished this one, but I plan on it. Both of these games have potential, and I was really impressed that Midnight Shadows seemed to learn a lot from its predecessor. I'd give the collection 7 out of 10 overall. It's worth playing if you enjoy horror games, but maybe not for people who need more direction in their games. Yamawari The Long Night Collection is available in both physical and digital editions just in time for Halloween on October 30th, 2018 for $39.99 US. If you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you want to see more reviews from me or anything else I'm doing right now, I am doing Dark Souls Remastered, then you can subscribe. Helps out the channel quite a lot. You can share the video, you can leave a comment. I love talking to people down in the comments. Thanks again so much. Take care, and I'll see you next time.